So good morning and welcome to Moncast on Mondays. Today I am joined by somebody I met at the Future Fit Legacy Awards and Jaina Mystery actually won an award at that, uh, that ceremony uh, and since then has spoken at the Simspa conference. And of course, Jaina and I have actually had uh, a few coffees together in Sainsbury's, which has been very pleasant. And uh, I've learned an awful lot, I have to say. So good morning, Jaina. How are you today? Morning, David. I'm very well today. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I'm, I'm managing to stay fit and active. I'm following uh, the chief medical officer's guidance and getting my regular exercise. How about you? Are you, are you exercising well? Are you, what are you up to? Yes, I've been doing well with my nutrition and my exercising from home. I've managed to adapt and I've been really consistent as well. So I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> that, that's really good. And I, and I think that will lead into some of the, the, the conversation that we're going to have today because you've, you've written some stuff to support people. But before we get into that, what's lockdown been like for you and for Laura? Well, initially it was quite intense, quite stressful. Mm. It's like the rug of normal life had just been ripped from beneath us all. It was quite a difficult time to adjust, but you know, if there's one thing that adversity has taught me through life, it's to adapt quickly um, and to see things differently and to focus really in the moment. So I used the opportunity just to, to see what was happening in my life and what I could do to keep myself well keep myself healthy because that was my priority and um it's quite interesting you should mention laura actually because for those of you that don't know she is actually my guide dog and they're very much in tune with what's going on around us energetically um she was very much on the quiet side which is unusual for her because she's quite boisterous she's quite playful when she's not working so just observing her behavior was quite interesting but Actually, having her by my side has been such a blessing. She's kept me so sane and so happy <laughs> throughout the time. It's always been like therapy for me um, because I've had to shield uh, because of my health condition as well. So mm. she's been a true blessing and help to me. Oh, that's fantastic. She's lovely. Um, those of people that know me know I don't get on really very well with animals, but. Um, Laura and I seem to have connected together over a few coffees in Sainsbury's. It's been, it's been really nice, actually, um, yes. different for me. So, so talk about what you've been up to um, since you won the Legacy Awards and how you've been sort of supporting your clients and customers to, 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 to basically navigate through lockdown. Yeah, so it's been a really exciting and productive couple of months to be fair. Um, so as you already mentioned, I spoke at the Simpspa conference in February. I was also featured in the SMPAR Professional magazine. Um, and I completed my nutrition and weight management consultant qualification. And I'm now moving on to the next phase of training. So when it comes to working with clients, given the, the crisis that we're going through, I've really had to be mindful about adapting the way that I work with people and focusing on what they really need now. Mm -hmm. So um, at the height of the crisis, I felt inspired to actually create something of value to help people stay healthy, fit and sane. So I created a guide which covers 21 tips mm -hmm. on mindset, movement and food which is now featured on the directory of official supporters for the Stronger Together campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been really well received actually. You know, I've had great feedback from people saying that the tips have been truly helpful. Mm -hmm. So off the back of that, you know, I'm really inspired to do more writing and I'm working on an ebook currently as well. Um, so clients, the ones that I've spoken to so far, you know, it's, I appreciate it's been a difficult time, um, you know, having to adjust to work out at home, for example, gyms not being accessible, um, having to homeschool children. So my role really through all of this personally has been to help people to adapt, to learn how to work out at home, how to keep their mental and physical well-being um, a priority. Um, because this is something that I've had to adjust to and work on myself as well. So um, that's where I'm at with my clients at the moment. Okay. And have you found your clients been more receptive during lockdown? Um, have they had more time? Have they had more motivation to work with you during the, the COVID period? Yeah, I, I do actually feel that 
the one people that I've spoken to actually have become more conscious about healthy living whereas they weren't before so there's more home cooking going on you know people are mindful about their health and well-being and more generally just more health conscious so I have a lot more people asking questions around okay what is a great workout for me at home what should I be eating what's considered healthy um, and it's fantastic to hear that you know health has become a priority for many people it's just um, you know they're just more aware of it now yeah yeah it's um it's been fascinating what talking to you and, and understanding your journey over time because this wasn't your first career was it you 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 were actually employed doing something else before um you decided that this was something you wanted to do so just give us a little bit of your history a bit of your background yeah so uh my background is as a holistic therapist so i qualified in 2009 um, doing holistic therapy such as aromatherapy and reflexology um, and that career path was sparked by my own personal journey of overcoming adversity having lost my eyesight i've become very in tune uh, with my senses and it was a perfect uh, career choice for me um, I was doing extremely well with that, working from home and also for a cancer charity. And then unfortunately I had a bit of a health crisis during that journey, um, which, which led to me realizing that I needed to take more responsibility for my health. Um, and part of that process was actually exercising more, which is something I absolutely hated doing um, and tried to avoid whenever I could. But it's interesting because it was a blessing in disguise. This was the turning point for me. Um, after a conversation with my, uh, my respiratory physio, I felt inspired to just take care of my own health. And once I began exercising, I noticed a positive change in how I was feeling physically, mentally, and emotionally. And over time, it just became a big part of my life. You know, I was feeling better, I was looking better and my confidence began to grow um, and eventually it became uh, an option as a new career path for me. So I qualified as a fitness instructor in 2014, um, becoming England's first blind female fitness instructor. Um, and I began working with the visually impaired community at that point, trying to make fitness more accessible to the um, visually impaired community. Um, and then I had another health setback. So it's been a bit up and down. Yeah. Um, but through that process, I realized that nutrition and weight management is an area that I really want to focus in on. Okay. And that's when I came across Future Fit. Mm, absolutely. They're a great organization. And just listening to you talk there, you've almost talked about what I guess an awful lot of the populations, particularly around us in Leicester, are going to be suffering at the moment around post-COVID, there were some really interesting exercise classes in the velodrome at Newport, where people who had had COVID were recovering from COVID, were getting back into exercise, were getting back into that, that health and nutrition side of things. Almost the same journey that you've had, but obviously on a, a much bigger scale. So I guess your experience is what's driving you to do the things that you currently do. And you know, watching you work out on some of your videos and things is just absolutely fantastic. It's so impressive. Um, I've been, I, I've really enjoyed just seeing how you stretch my mind about how, what can be achieved through things. So talk about your ebook. What are you, what are you writing for us at the moment then, Jane? It's top secret, David. <gasps> oh, right. Okay. I didn't realise that. Well, in that case, don't talk about it. That's absolutely <laughs> so, so if, if you, And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that because I'm really looking forward to the launch. So <laughs> what your it's views coming are? coming soon. Okay, that's fine. To it's focused, there's a lot of content around nutrition um, and around food diaries as well, but it's it's very similar to the top dips guide, but a lot more comprehensive. Mm, okay, that's interesting, because actually the aromatherapy stuff in the tips guide was what made me remember your previous career to this, because there's actually a couple of points in, in your tips, isn't there, around aromatherapy? Yes, absolutely. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that actually, because you know, it fits very well in with mental well-being. Um, and there's so much you could do with essential oils. That's another like passion of mine. It still is. It's oils I, is something I still work with. Mm -hmm. It's I always have oils burning by the next next to my um, my computer. You know when I'm doing my work, it really helps with focus and concentration. Yeah, 
Fantastic. So we can't talk about my ebook, and I've just slapped myself on the hands because I didn't realise, but that doesn't matter. Um, talk about what your vision is for the future. How, how would you like to see us, you know, post COVID two years time? Well, I've had to think about this. I really am impressed with people that I've spoken to that are more active now and they're just more health conscious. And I really hope that this carries through and people continue to take care of themselves um, and begin to go back to the gym as well. And I know that some people have found the alternative of training at home much more convenient uh, because it sort of fits around, you know, lifestyle and commitments and things like this. There's no traveling involved, but there's nothing like actually being in the gym. And I personally miss it myself. Um, mm. A few friends have said there's, there are, there's a little bit of anxiety and fear around going back into the gym as well. Um, just really not knowing what to accept, to accept because things have changed so much. Yeah. But um, with a bit of reassurance, knowing that safety procedures are in place, I think it will be absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that people will continue to, you know, put their health first because I do believe health is our greatest wealth. Mm. No, absolutely. And that's a really interesting point, actually, Jaina, because you're the first sort of customer that I've spoken to of a gym because you, you do regularly train or you did before COVID. So yeah. what's your expectation when you go back to your club, when you go back into fitness? How different do you think it's going to be? That's a really good question, because the uh, gym that I go to is a private studio. Mm -hmm. So um, it's literally just myself and my personal trainer. Um, it's a great private space. Um, my trainer has been extremely good. He's kept us updated about what's going to happen uh, when we go back into gym, what to expect. But I'm just keeping a very um, open mind um, and just doing what we need to do and following procedures. Um, and for me personally, um, working out a way of maintaining social distancing is yeah. a challenge only because I require hands-on support in the gym. So that's the only little obstacle we have but i'm sure we'll find a way around it really good i'm really glad to hear that and does does there is there a challenge around social distancing and laura do people like to be able to pet laura or have people learned that actually working dogs shouldn't have that attention that's interesting because there's been less people coming forward to stroke her than there used to be right. okay um, which is which is good in a way because she is a working dog and really when we're out she needs to be focused on concentrating on what she's doing um but dogs have no sense of social distancing so whenever she sees another dog she's ready to say hello so that's me having to take control of that situation <laughs> yeah it's, it's just fascinating and i think this this whole piece around reopening gyms around the confidence levels of customers you've articulated that so well um, from a customer point of view and I think that's a really important point that I just hadn't considered when I asked you to have this conversation It was more about what you were doing in the sector and how you were supporting your your clients But actually this piece around being a customer and a, and a customer that has extra vulnerability is really interesting from that point of view So just in the last minute that you've got available to us um, what, what What's the future hold for you? Where do you want to be in a couple of years time? So I really want to progress and build my nutrition consulting practice. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really keen on helping busy women who are now working from home to achieve their fitness and weight loss goals through mindset, movement and food. And I just think it's a really important area to focus on because working from home is something that I enjoy doing as well. And I found ways to overcome challenges to make sure that I stay fit and healthy. And I feel I can help other women um, to actually do the same and I appreciate that people's circumstances have changed a lot including income so um, I offer empower hour sessions yeah. where I offer simple actionable tools for people to apply on mindset movement and food I actually have a client booked in tomorrow uh, where we're going to have this conversation so I'm very excited about the future I think Excellent. yeah okay and if anybody's interesting how, they, how can they get in contact with you so feel free to contact me. Uh, my email is hello at janamystery.co.uk. Fantastic. Jane, that is our time. We've had our 15 minutes. As always, it absolutely flies by when I get to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm really looking forward to our next coffee 
and catch up. So we'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Cheers.